Hey everybody, um, this is not normally one of the videos that I do, but I figured I'd kind of keep you up to date on what's going on with plant care. Uh, I have not done any plant care videos in a hot minute, so I figured with all the time that I have on my hands right now, I might as well do that. So um, first things first, uh oh, I thought I already left it over here. Um, I wanted to actually go over what I have available for uh, some of my plant care tips. So stuff like um, what I use in my spray bottles. This is just my water. So I use this to mist regularly almost all of my plants. Um, some of my plants really don't like being misted. They don't really absorb any moisture or water through their foliage. So I got to make sure that I don't do that for them. Um... I want to say I have closer to a hundred plants with the stuff that is I'm about to propagate right now. But um, besides that, everything that I do have on my person right now, because I'm kind of looking around my room, some of it just needs to be propagated. And um, I actually need to invest in some rooting hormone. But for those of us that don't know what to look for in a good brand of rooting hormone or a um, kind of good, like if you don't know what you're doing and you need help, you could always use honey. As weird as it sounds, honey works. You would dip the stem of, actually, you know, I can use this as an example. This is going to be going into its own pot soon um, because look at how healthy those roots are. Those are crazy growth right there. And if these didn't have roots, what I would have done was cut this with, actually, let me get me shears. Let me get everything for you. So give me two seconds so I can demonstrate. I also figured I'd get my magic spray because that works too. Let me slide this back so I'm not on top of you guys. <laughs> All right, that's a little bit better. So I would honestly just take and kind of cut in an upwards angle for the stem. And then from there, I would dip the stem in honey and then immediately put it in soil. And I would tightly pack it. This way it has a little bit of stabilization. So when the roots kind of spread out, it will already be anchored in the soil and it'll have a great way to grow. Right now, I'm just water propagating just because that's how I started. That's how Chelsea, one of my close friends, got me into this. So. I figured why not keep to what I know and then I started doing a little bit more reading and discovered that uh, honey actually works really well. So I actually wanted to try growing a rose bush from a single rose. So I'm definitely when I get my hand on a rose that I like or a couple roses that I like, I am 100% going to try that and let you know how it goes. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting experiment. Um, then another thing that I wanted to talk about is it's not, it's just a mist bottle, nothing special. It has all these words on it, but it just explains like what type of misting bottle it is. I got it um, for 12 bucks at uh, Woodland Gardens in Manchester. They have an armada of these. I'm sure you can find these just about anywhere. Um, but I was there at the time grabbing some new plants and I got one of these when I first got into uh, taking care of plants. Um, this, however, is not just water in here. That's why I use this one. They're two different spray bottles, strictly water. This one, on the other hand, is my pest control. And I know it sounds gross, but when you're bringing a brand new plant that either came from outside or from another nursery into your own home amongst your own little indoor outdoor garden, expect there to be something wrong with the plant. Not always, but sometimes. So unfortunately, I had the um, the luck uh -huh, of bringing home a plant from one of my favorite places and it had gnats all over it. So this magical mist, I like to call it, is simply three ingredients, water, hydrogen peroxide, and on top of it, Dawn dish soap. Today I filled it up because we didn't have the Dawn dish soap that I normally use. 
um, I use unscented antibacterial soft soap. So non-scented always works. It won't kill your plant. Um, hydrogen peroxide will not kill your plant in small quantities, of course. When you're misting it in high concentrations, or I should say low concentrations in water, it will be fine. It will be completely fine. You will never have to worry about anything going on with the plant. So I treated the plant, ironically enough, the plant is right next to me. It is nice, big and healthy. It's been putting out a bunch of leaves and everything. And so far from what I can tell, there is nothing wrong with it. And all I've been doing is I've been spraying the base of the pot itself. So actually I can demonstrate with my Chinese money plant. And this is actually going to be separated in the next hour or so. So after I get off the stream, I'm going to be separating it and counting all the babies to see how much we got here. But what I normally do is I sprayed around the edges so where it is in the basin. So this is not the plant. The plant's out of, uh, out of view. But I would spray all down here along the edge of the basin. I picked up the pot. I sprayed the bottom of the um, pot. Thankfully, it's single-use or it says single-use plastic, but I can reuse these all I want. And then I spray all the leaves and I try to get into the soil as best as I can. Um, doesn't always work, but um, you would see uh, immediate results within the first couple days. Obviously, if it's really bad, you'll know right off the bat. Um, but as long as you catch it ahead of time and isolate the plant from all the other plants, it's very, very hard for any of the other, um, so you have thrips, you have um, mealies, you have aphids. And um, for aphids, you can actually um, completely clean that up by getting ladybugs. As weird as that sounds, mind you, they're lucky as well. So you don't have to worry about that. But aphids will get eaten alive and completely destroyed by ladybugs. And then you have a nice little friendly, um, beautiful kind of bug repellent. It's the same reason why some people don't kill some of the house spiders that they find like in the corners of the rooms or stuff like that. I don't like spiders, so I try to safely catch release them. But ladybugs, they're beautiful. They're harmless. They do what they need to do and they protect the plants in 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 whole. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, they don't harm clothing or any type of stuff like that either. Um they keep to their surroundings. I'm kind of like gauging at some of my plants over here, seeing if they need to be repotted, but they don't. I think it's going to be a quick little small job today. Um, but I'm definitely going to bring out my, my uh, rubber plant outside and double check it. Um, make sure I got everything. If anything, I might just replace the soil altogether. Um, but so far it's, been very promising and it's been responding really well to this so i am not gonna knock it just yet um mealy bugs you literally just spray them like this and they don't look like bugs uh mealies look like little white fluffs they're like itty 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 bitty they're easy to completely go unnoticed however you'll notice it because they're kind of like in the corners so like when you have a branch and they go splitting off from one of each other, they'll be right in that little nestled corner and it's just white and fluffy. And you wouldn't think anything. You're gonna be like, oh, it's pollen. No, a majority of my indoor plants and a majority of most indoor plants don't pollinate like that. So you would just spray it and you can even have your hand behind it just so you don't soak whatever is, um, whatever the plant or the pot is resting on this way. If it's wood, it won't get damaged. Um, other than that, I want to say there's probably going to be a lot of separations and a lot of repottings um, once the weather gets a little bit nicer. Uh, I've had a lot of consistency with the temperature in my room, so I don't want to bring them outside uh, one day and get have them be used to that really quickly and then bring them back inside and then be in complete shock because it's slowly but surely getting into the 50s, which I'm really happy about. And I know the plants will definitely appreciate it there. But to have it at a constant 60 some odd degrees and higher in my house, mm, I don't want to jinx it just yet. So I'm going to start by bringing out my Chinese money plant and um, taking that outside and separating it and getting it new soil and everything like that. And then going from there 
And then at some point, I'm going to have to repot and separate my ZZ, my aloe, which is gigantic. Let me show you guys, by the way. Um, and if you have any questions, please put them in the live chat so I can answer them for you. Aloe is a monster. Holy moly. Um, so I'm holding it above my head right now because you won't believe me when I say it was maybe from the bottom of the screen, from what you can see, it's maybe that tall when I got it from Stop and Shop, mind you. This is the bad boy now. So if I pop it right out and the pot is, it's literally this big pot. So an entire finger length right here. So the length, I want to say, if I knew where my, actually, you know what, I think I do. I have it in my drawer. Can never go wrong with this stuff, ever. I know I have it in here. Or maybe I had it past tense. I'm determined to find it. I really want to know the dimensions of this bad boy. And I don't know where I put it, but not the end of the world. I want to say this is at least a two foot span right here, without a doubt. I mean, the height just from the base of the pot is probably around 18 inches right there. And then coming back towards me, so from the front here, coming back towards me would probably be another 18 inches. So I want to say 18, 18 by, um, I want to say, 28 close to 30 inches right here i mean it's definitely not three feet across but without a doubt it is getting there so this bad boy definitely needs a new pot and then if you can't tell i did harvest it here just um uh for medicinal uses you can use it for burns um any type of ablations in the skin so i have bad eczema sometimes it flares up and i actually cut down some aloe and add some honey to it and it actually stews my skin way better than any benadryl or hydrocortisone ever will hydrocortisone takes so long to act to to finally act and this is immediate and it occurs in nature and it's free because it continually grows so i definitely need to repot this bad boy and then can't wait to show off my Monstera, oh man, she's a big one too. Um, I'm not even gonna pull her over just because you're not gonna be able to see me if I bring her over. But I mean, the main things that I did wanna talk about was what to look for in further posting, definitely gonna be repotting, definitely gonna be putting up pictures, a lot of the stuff that's being relocated to bigger pots, definitely gonna have growth uh, progress photos as well um propagation is a very slow and boring process so i will make it known that i won't be posting that much stuff in regards to propagation i'll have like a whole picture like all right this is what i got going on in this area of propagation and we'll see what happens there um but remember honey actually don't like i just wanted to use it as a prop honey yeah Honey from on and on. <laughs> Honey is a great use for just about anything, really, whether it be ailments or simply as, <clears throat> excuse me, a rooting hormone. Um, I do have a lot of gardening books in front of me just because why not? But um, another thing that most people don't know is you can actually use your hair, as weird as it sounds, as a nutrient for your plants. So... I don't always throw out my hair after I comb it out. I do little balls and I put it in the soil and a lot of the nutrients in our hair can seep into the soil and our hair is biodegradable. So it will eventually decompose and disappear, but it will help plant growth tremendously. So I do recommend doing that. I mean, not a significant where you're ripping out your hair, but like when you comb your hair, no products. I mean, like none, like this is post wash, no products in it whatever you have in your um, hair or when it's dry at least so you know you haven't put any products in it and the products that are left are probably not as potent as they used to be. And you can take little bits of hair off of your comb, not off of your head, and just ball them up, put them in the soil. 
or put them on the top of the soil. It depends on the type of plant, but I'll definitely be going over that at some point. I definitely do it a lot for my snake plants because they love it. And I just separated a baby from the mother because I started doing that. Um, I'm trying to think of what other stuff that I can go over besides like pests and all that. Um, other than that, I think a majority of my content right now is going to be strictly repotting. So I'm going to try to minimize that as possible. This way you can have a diversity when I do have like proper content. Um, I did want to show off this baby right here because I don't know if you guys remembered, but she nearly completely died and she is surviving and putting out new growth. This one's a little bit happier. So I'm going to turn this one towards the one though. But I have her. She doesn't do great in high light. And this is Syngonium. I believe this is um, Pink Illusion. And this is, um, I forget which one this is. This is Mary something. Mary something. I'll have to look it up. But um, that's another thing that I do recommend is turn your plants. If you see one plant, one side of your plant looking a little bit like, mm, you're a bit low in volume, you don't have that many leaves, turn it regularly. So like every week, you'll notice because plants sometimes when they need a little bit more light, they'll start reaching and that will create bald spots. So let's say this is the pot and the sun's coming from over there and this is a baby plant. So you'll have a bunch of growth in this direction and nothing in this direction. So what you'll wanna do is completely turn it so all that growth is facing away from the window and then eventually it will start growing back towards the sun. And eventually once you regularly do that and make those adjustments, you will see nice fuller plants over time. My freaking dolphins, however, has mealies that I just treated, which I'm so mad about because I'm pretty sure my string of bananas got it sick. And the string of bananas, which I'm propagating right now because of the fact that I had to cut the entirety of the plant. Like I only have six strands from that original plant. And that was a huge plant that I had, huge plant that I had. Completely invested with mealies. I didn't want to risk it. So I trashed the entirety of the plant. I took those six healthy strands. I treated them. I treated the water that I put them in. No rooting hormone. Thankfully, with the nose that were on some of the strands, they started rooting. There are not enough roots, however, to put it in soil. It just won't hold up. So I'm thinking of cutting the strands down in, in length and trying to propagate those as well to see if I can get more volume and more roots so I, when I can put them in soil, it'll be a nice, healthy thick plant. Um, I don't know what to do with my dolphins right now because it's grown a significant unrealistic amount in the winter and I don't want to have to cut it down. I did take away some of the strands that I did treat that didn't really have an effect. So I cut them off and tossed them in the trash, but so far so good. I mean, I haven't seen any other issues on any other strands. I'm looking at the plant right now, don't mind me. But besides that, I mean, it's just a day-to-day -day process. It Don't get me wrong. It's very, very, very frustrating, but I love it. And I wouldn't trade up this hobby for anything in the world. Uh, I did want to kind of show off some of my new babies because I have pots for them. And I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with it. So... I found two new pots at TJ Maxx, and that's another thing that I'm definitely going to be talking about at a future point in time, is like all of my favorite places to shop. Um, if it's nurseries, I'm, I'm in Connecticut, so I will go here in Glastonbury. Um, stay away from Home Depot in Glastonbury because they have dying sick plants all the time. And I learned the hard way in like the first month of when I got into plants and I bought like eight plants and they were super cheap and they looked healthy. And that's a problem. Some of the plants look healthy and they are healthy and then they're infested and then the, re the infested plants literally just kill the rest of the plants. And that's what happened. I bought two new plant or I bought eight plants two of them were sick and I had no idea because I was inexperienced and it got the remainder of my plants severely sick and it killed 
about four other plants right next to it. So I had to completely throw them all out. I was so heartbroken over it. So heartbroken. Throw out all those plants. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was devastating. And I wanted to give up right then and there, but I'm glad I didn't. Now, another place I'd like to shop is um, for like cute little cute little pots and stuff like that. I go to TJ Maxx. They do a lot of good um, sales on stuff for plants, plant stands. They have good shelving and they're not expensive at all. That's why I love TJ Maxx. Another place I like to go is to Goodwill as weird as it sounds. Excuse me. I like going to look for like vases and stuff like that because let me see here. <coughs> I got this beautiful vase here and I believe this was handmade because oh, handmade from Taiwan Teleflora and it's absolutely beautifully blown and to the craftsmanship's amazing and I got two of these it was a set for four dollars you really can't go wrong with Goodwill. And we have one right down the street. I haven't been in a while just because I haven't needed to. But still, um, definitely a good place to look for in regards to cute pots, cute vases. And not just for plants either, for, for flowers and stuff. Then this bad boy, if you can't tell, does not want to grow in the other direction. So it's growing this way when it should be growing this way and up. Oh, it's growing up. This, I want to say, is the stump right here. That is about a mm, 8 to 10 inch stump. And then you have all of this growth. So you have about 30 inches of growth from that stump right there. And it is absolutely amazing. I want to say outwards in this direction, you have easily... 12 to 16 inches of growth and then this direction obviously it really does not care to grow that way so i'm going to try to force it to grow that way by turning it towards the sun and seeing what happens even though it's probably not going to be happy but it'll live um other than that let's see i also have this cutie pie right here ready for this hold on fix her bangs right isn't that cute this is with my um ruby necklaces and if you can't tell it is pink strands right there pink strands and they're just so cute and I love anything trailing I really do have an affinity for and I don't think I will ever stop getting stuff that trail come here pain in my ass All right but it's just Hmm. I wonder if I can. I'm gonna try propagating some of these as well. I want to make that known. Experimenting is always good. I'm actually gonna do something weird. I'm gonna crack it open because if you squeeze these, they 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 feel rubbery, but these retain the water, and I kind of am curious. If it's all water in here or if it's a leaf. So we'll find out in a second. Ooh. Oh, it retains. So it is like a gelatin mixture in here. It smells like a plant though. That's for sure. It's, there's like a, it's very, very viscous almost but if I squeeze it all that water content is coming out that's unbelievable plants are unbelievable and it's it's crazy because you have something so small that made my fingers very very wet and then you have something so big that's probably gonna soak my fingers so there's a lot of stuff over here like that as well don't mind me I'm also checking this bad boy for mealies because my string of pearls got sick. 
And I think those are those bad boys. Son of a bitch. And this is where this comes in. So, like I said. This works for, I want to say, 90% of ink shoes. But the only two issues that I've ever had were Nats and Melee's. So, I can't account for the other two existing uh, issues that a lot of plants have being aphids and uh, thrips. But, I will know... Thrips, I don't know. I will say, sorry, I will say I don't know how to get rid of thrips. I really don't. I don't know anything about them. But aphids, ladybugs, and just spray the crap out of them. I don't know if spraying them works, but definitely the ladybugs will. And then for mealies and gnats, spraying them will kill them. I've seen immediate spraying of a single gnat just kill a dead. So, I mean, I know the spray works. Um, plus it hasn't harmed any of my plants, so I'm going to keep using it. My monster is getting me potted. I'm trying to look at all my other stuff over there. My jade plant's going to get repotted because that bad boy is overgrowing that pot. It's getting so tall too. Um, hmm. Besides that, I really don't know. I, I don't really have that many other tips. I know the winter was rough on my end for some of my plants, but besides that, that's, that's what we, we got today. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to repot my two plants and separate them in a bit, and I will definitely show off the babies that we have here because I can't even tell where the mother plant is and the babies are. Like, I can see, like, a couple here and there, but I know damn well that there are probably a lot, and I'm excited. So peace out, guys. Can't wait to show you what we found.